Hi guys, welcome back to another video. I am making a video about everything that I read in April. So I read 11 books and in like a general way, that's kind of like a low number for me. Usually I get to about like 15, 16 books a month. So I am gonna talk about like why I read not as many this month. I talked about it a lot more in my last vlog, like the, the reading stuff I went through and like how bad it was. But yeah, so basically I slumped a lot this month and I don't normally have like a big slump like that. So it kind of like held me back from the books that I really wanted to read. I just didn't read quite as many as I wanted to or like get to as many as I wanted to, but I still had like a great month of reading and I felt like I read a lot of things that I wanted to. And yeah, so let me just get right into it. I started out the month with If He Had Been With Me by Laura Nowland. I really enjoyed this book. It was a five star. So right off the bat, I started out the, five, the month with a five star and it was so amazing like i think that some people had an issue with this book because of issues with the character the main character herself and just like personality issues with her like the only complaints i've really seen is just like about like how she dressed and like the fact that she was like a high school student but i think if you really like books about high school nostalgia and high school love stories and like the kind of innocent love that comes with like being in high school now i know not everybody has like innocent high school love stories but like this is a very like innocent high school love story and very much so friends to lovers and like lifelong friends to lovers and you're just rooting for the, her the whole time and the boy it just so beautiful the ending breaks your heart and i just i actually like, cried real tears at the end of this like i was heartbroken like i was sitting in my chair heartbroken and i'm just a sucker for books that make me feel something so much that I have like a physical reaction to it. Some books I'm finishing and I'm like, that was a good book. Like, you know, three star. But this one absolutely ripped my heart out. And you can say all you want that the character was kind of like strange, like a strange high school student. She was maybe a little bit quirky, but you cannot take away the trauma that she has and the sadness that comes with this book. And just like the last like 50 pages is a whirlwind and I recommend this book over and over and over and over again so good okay i also annotated it which i knew i was going to get right from the beginning like right when i first start a book i can pretty much tell if i want to annotate it or not and right away i knew i had to and oh my god so good okay and then i moved on to queen of nothing which is the last in the i think this is she calls it something else but the cruel prince trilogy this is the last one by Holly Black and basically if you don't know anything about this series it is a trilogy that is I want to say it's YA yes it's definitely a YA it's a YA fantasy book by Holly Black I know a lot there's a lot of like controversy around this book because people want to say that it's an enemies to lovers and I very much disagree with that and I think my expectations going into these books was that I was going to have a love story and that it was going to be like fantasy romance and it was not fantasy romance at all it is way more more on the politics side fantasy like fantasy with a lot of politics involved so I think I was disappointed by that and this book has the most like romance if you want to say actually maybe the wicked king has the most I can't really remember now the last two kind of blurred together for me but I will I do know that I loved how this wrapped up I don't know I just feel like I didn't love that she like you aren't sure about the main character and the love interest like i understand why some people confuse it with being a enemies to lovers because the whole time you are confused about if like where they're at and like what's going on with them and i don't think i liked that i think i would have enjoyed it more if i just would have had more understanding about like the characters themselves i feel like this doesn't make any sense these characters make no sense to me and I didn't really like the main female in this book. She, to me, didn't have a lot of dimension. And now the male love interest or main protagonist was definitely interesting to me and a dynamic character, but the female was not. She fell really flat for me. So that pretty much is my only complaint. But the world that they're in, the world that Holly Black paints and the world that she created in these books is so like the only word I can use is like whimsical like that I hate that word for some reason like it sounds weird to me when I say that word but it's like fits this book so much and 
I love the ending, I was satisfied with it, and it's just, it's YA, you know? YA just has a different kind of flair, and I liked it. I did, I just had an issue with the main, the main girl. What was her name, Jude? The fact that I don't even remember her name, that's terrible. Yes, Jude, that was her name. <laughs> Oh my gosh, leave it to me to just like forget her name. But I liked these books, like I really did. I don't think I would reread them, but I would recommend them to somebody who's looking for a good YA. But it's not love, it's not a romance book. So don't, don't expect that. I was disappointed. Okay, so then I started the Mortal Instruments series with, I started with obviously City of Bones, the first one in the series. I, so I talked about this in my reading vlog, because I read City of Ashes. I read these both of these this month. And I talked about City of Ashes in this, in my reading vlog. But basically this series is a YA fantasy series based on these people called the Shadow Hunters. And they are basically like demon fighters. And you don't know that they're there. Like mundanes or people who can't see them don't know that they're there. And then our main character, Clary, she finds out that she's a shadow hunter and her mom has hidden it from her all these years. Da, 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 da. So she is like diving into this world. I was enjoying what I was reading. I was enjoying the characters. I was enjoying the creatures, which makes no sense, but it's like there's vampires, there's werewolves, there's shadow hunters, there's mermaids, like there's everything. And I was enjoying that. And I love that it's in New York City. I absolutely love New York City as a setting, like urban fantasy almost. I just love that so much. So I was liking that. Okay, but what it came down to for me was these characters themselves, Clary and uh, Jace and Alec and Isabel, like they're enjoyable characters, but I, as an adult reading this, it is hard for me to read because they're just so young. So I just don't feel any connection to them at all. And I'm such like an emotional reader. Like I want to feel connected to the people that I'm reading about in these books, which is probably the reason why I didn't really love Jude is because I just like didn't feel connected to her. Like I didn't feel like she had a lot of feelings and I want to feel like the person I'm reading about is somebody I've met. Like I want to like be in their head and be in their emotions and like feel like I'm on like a ride with them like all their good days all their bad days like I want to see that and that's what I'm saying about YA for some reason the YA books that I've read don't really have that the YA fantasy books I've read these these characters are very surface level and maybe it's because it is a third person it's written in third person so that maybe that's just it maybe I just don't really enjoy books written from that perspective I feel like as these books go on I'm going to enjoy them more like I like Cass Cassandra Clare's writing I like the shadow hunters world so much it's just they're young for me the characters are so really young which I'm kind of understanding why some people skip the mortal instruments and just go straight to the uh the next one which some people just go straight to the infernal devices and maybe that's what I should have done <laughs> instead of trying to read this series but I wanted to read the whole thing in its entirety to like really get the full impact of the shadow hunter series so I'm just kind of like pushing through and I'm reading these books like I, they don't put me in a slump I read them pretty quickly because they are easy reads so I'm just going to continue on even though they're not like sending me into like an emotional rampage like I would like they're still good books so they're three stars they're average they could go either way for me so okay and then the next book I read was Things We Never Got Over. I, I'm trying to think back to that book and what it was about. I read two very similar books this month. Things We Never Got Over and Part of Your World seemed similar to me or felt similar to me. Like I can't really distinguish between the both of them. And I, I can say that I really did like the main characters in Things We Never Got Over, but the storyline to me was so cheesy. So the ending to me is just so cheesy and her having an evil twin is so cheesy to me. And maybe I just like wasn't in, the, now this month I will say I was not in the mood to read romance at all. I did not want to read romance, not even a little bit. So I kind of like forced myself to read it because I wanted to be reading romance. Like I was like, oh, like the month before I read so much romance. So when I went into April, I was like, I'm going to be reading lots of romance and I did not want to be reading it so I tried to like stick it out because I enjoyed the book because I liked the characters like I loved the main guy whatever his name was I cannot think of it right now 
I loved him. Like the writer did a, the author did a really good job at like making him seem so desirable and so sweet and so caring. And I liked that, but the storyline just completely, like the end of it, I was like, what is going on? Like, what am I reading? But I, I really did enjoy like the close proximity, like forced proximity a little bit. And the whole small town vibe is so cute to me. Like when I was growing up, I just like wanted that. Like I wanted like a small town romance, never got it, but I wanted it. And so like that was enjoyable to me, but everything else, was just you could tell the author was just trying to like put a dramatic spin on this like relationship that was already gonna work out but like she had to like make something like crazy happen so like the the readers would be like you know get all the way through the book and i did not enjoy it i was like what is this drama okay so then i read i'll just talk about part of your world even though i read that towards the end of the month i'll talk about it because i felt like it was so similar to things we never got over and part of your world was a lot better to me. I rated them both three stars. So I rated Things We Never Got Over was three stars and Part of Your World was three stars. Now Part of Your World, I loved Daniel. Like I really did. And I thought that the age gap between the two of them was really going to bother me because I've never read a book with the female being older. And I just like had never really like read a book like that. So I wasn't sure how I was going to feel. And I liked it. I didn't bother me at all because in my head she wasn't as old as they were saying she was. So I was just kind of like pretending that wasn't the reality. I was pretending she was more like Daniel's age. And I liked the doctor, like farm guy, like opposite world colliding kind of thing. I thought that was so cute. And the ending was obviously predictable, but I still liked it but it was like average for me the plot was good the writing was good but it was just average like i wasn't thrown out of my seat like amazing i didn't have to read it like i read it because i was just gonna read it but it wasn't like amazing so that's why it kind of fell on that like average rating for me but i would recommend them because i just think that the reason why i didn't rate them four stars was because I wasn't into romance this month and if I had been feeling like I wanted to read a lot of romance then I would have probably rated them higher but because I was just like not feeling romance at all then that's what happened and the reason why I wasn't feeling romance was because of this stinking book this book made no sense to me at all at all I did not like this book I gave it a two star and that was really nice of me I should have given it a one star these characters made no sense to me at all and I think that as somebody who under I, I have people in my life with addiction so I know what that looks like so it's not like this is like a foreign concept to me and I'm sure like for somebody who has struggled with it themselves maybe they would enjoy this book because maybe it would like connect with them on a deeper level I felt no connection whatsoever to these characters and maybe that was the author's point but I didn't like it it wasn't for me it just wasn't a romance to me like this is not a romance book in my head this was a book about two kids struggling with addiction and it just isn't this isn't being marketed correctly in my head like these kids or these college kids were in love yes but did they have a romance or a love story not really now maybe because this is a series there is more that goes on with these characters so then eventually they do get into like a love story and maybe this is just like one of those series where like the first one is not that great and then the rest get better because I understood that happens sometimes authors kind of like get into their groove once they start putting out more books but this is just like not what I expected and it put me in a slump really really badly about middle of the month I got thrown into the slump because of this stupid book and I actually ended up finishing it. I should have DMF'd it, but I finished it and I wanted to finish it because I wanted to give it the chance that I thought it maybe deserved. I just felt like the, the time jumps really didn't make sense. I'd be like, all of a sudden, like everything had changed. Like they were like going like this and all of a sudden everything changed within the last like 50 pages. Like I felt like nothing was happening, nothing, 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 all of a sudden. And I was like, okay, okay. And then on my Kindle, I read Wrong Place, Wrong Time. And, oh, it was on my Kindle. It was in a library book, but I returned the library book. I really, 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 really liked Wrong Place, Wrong Time. I gave it a four star. I think that, I, so I went into this book completely blind, not knowing anything about what it was supposed to be about. 
and I liked the main premise of this book a lot. Like the time loop concept was really, really interesting and wanting to know how it ends is the main reason why you read this book. Now, I think that's how it is with a lot of thrillers. Like you're reading it to just find out what the ending is. Like what happens? How did this happen? And I, I know that the twist in this book happens slowly, that it's not shocking. It's not one of those books where like the twist happens on like one sentence and you're like, Ooh. like this twist is slowly evolving throughout the book and you're slowly learning what's happening. And I think that's why it gets me so involved the whole time is because I'm slow, the author's like slowly giving me pieces of the puzzle and I really liked that in a thriller. I felt like some thrillers can like keep you like, oh, nothing's happening, nothing's happening. And all of a sudden like the twist happens and you're like, oh my gosh, I have to read the last like 10 pages, but the first like 200, nothing is happening. So I liked that something was happening the entire book. And I think that's why it's rated really well. And people really recommend that book because it is so easy to read and get through, not get through, but it's just so entertaining the whole time. You just want to be reading it. So yeah, that was a four star. So, so far this month, I've only had, at this point, the books I'm talking about, I only had had one five star, but I feel like that's pretty good. So I was in this reading slump, right? So I was addicted to you, put me in this horrible reading slump. And I decided that I wanted to read some kind of fantasy. And I knew that romance books, strictly romance books, were not cutting it. And I ordered Guild and not really knowing anything about it. I just saw one TikTok about it and I was like, it's 10, like 15 bucks on Amazon. I'll just order it because I really wanted like some kind of easy fantasy romance. Now, I didn't really understand what kind of romance this was. This is definitely an adult fantasy romance and it is a King Midas retelling with a very dark twist. And I picked this up because I was like in such a bad slump and I didn't think I was going to really like it that much, honestly, but it was the genre that I needed. So I was like, I'm just going to read it. So this book, the first, um, how long is this book? 350. The first like 200 pages of this book, nothing is going on. And it, it was interesting to me because I was interested in the power that this, the main character has. And the fact that she was being kept in a cage, that was very interesting to me. But oh my gosh, the last like 100 pages, you get gripped. Okay, so then I was like, I have to order the second one. So then I ordered Glint. Amazing. I, five stars. Did I give it a five star? Okay, no. I give it a 4.5. Probably because I read it so quickly. I read this in literally a day. And I think the reason why I didn't give it a full five is because... Once again, with this one, the beginning is a little bit slow and it takes a little bit of time. Guild, I gave a three. I gave it like a 3.75. So it was a high three. And then this is like a 4.5. The main character. Okay, I don't even know how you would pronounce it. Aaron? Aaron? A U R E N. Aaron. Is that Aaron? No, I'm not smart. Okay. Her. That is her name. Okay. She is such a. I such a dynamic character that I from the beginning was obsessed with her like I was so in love with her and in this book you meet the love interest now nothing really happens with them in this book things are just slowly evolving it's definitely a slow burn like a slow slow burn and I usually hate slow burns but oh my gosh this just like made me so happy like I'm happy it was a slow burn because the end result just makes it so much better and I love these main characters so much. I was rooting for them so hard. So then of course, once I finished this one in one day, I bought Gleam and was obsessed. This is a almost 700 page book. Okay. Yeah, it's like 650. And I was completely obsessed with this too. Like the things that go on in this book. Oh my gosh. Like I, my heart was just like, being ripped out of my chest like I was crying I literally felt like emotionally like wrung out after reading these books I was so upset the whole time and like in a good way and the author does a really good job at like making it so heart-wrenching and then it's like leaving you on a cliffhanger so then of course like first week of May I read Glow which is the fourth one in the series 
and the last book in the series, Gold, comes out in December. So I'm just like waiting patiently because I, at this point, I finished them. Like as I'm filming this, I finished Glow. So this is definitely one of my new favorite series. I'm so 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 happy that I pushed through Guild and got to Gleam or got to Glint. I'm just so happy I read these books. It was exactly what I needed to like get me out of the slump. So thankfully, towards the end of the month, I was out of the slump, but. One of those weeks I was sick, I was in a slump, like this was not it for me this month. It was a good month of reading, but it was just a little bit all over the place. I'm so happy that I found this new favorite series, like I'm just so happy. Okay, thanks for watching, peace out.